So when I posted my first video on my camp stove, I asked if anybody was interested in how I built it. And the response was overwhelming, so I'm going to carry on. Here's the next part of how to build your own camping stove. Now one thing I did not say is that it was going to be easy, that it took no skill whatsoever, and you could knock it off in a couple hours on a Saturday afternoon, because that's farthest from the truth. It's a little difficult, it does require skill and patience. The key thing to making something like that is patience, because you do not want to hurt yourself. Before you can design anything, you really have to decide on its purpose. And the purpose of the wood stove I want is to A, I want it to heat my trailer, B, I want to use it as a stove, 3, I want it to be an oven, uh, I want it to generate electricity, I want it to generate light, and I want it to be compact. So in reality I want it to do everything. But also I want it to be able to run on pieces of wood that I find, scraps, but I also want it to be able to use it on wood pellets. And that's why I got this piece, is because I want to use it as a hopper. Now, to make that all work, I actually want it, everything to be in this stove so I can take it down and set it up and it doesn't take up a lot of space. I'm not really concerned about weight or um, efficiency as much because I don't think I need a stove this big to heat my trailer. So I think I've got a little leeway in the design, but those are my goals anyway. You've probably seen a lot of people have made uh, stoves from ammo boxes, like this one here. And this is the ammo box that had the frozen poo in it, if you saw that other video, but there is no frozen poo in it right now, so not to worry. Uh, that's a 50 caliber box. However, there's one called a Fat 50, which is a little bit bigger. And so I've picked this up, and I'm going to use this as the basis for my design. And as far as pipe, I'm going to use 3-inch pipe, but I needed a connector, and I couldn't find anything suitable. So what I did is I took one of my, uh, my torch canisters, without any propane in it, of course, and... I've cut that off and that's nice solid steel. That should work. So that's what I've got for a basis. I've also got a lot of metal, like this big chunk here I, I got out of a uh, barbecue that somebody was throwing out. And I've also got some sheet metal as well. So I think that's enough to start me off. So I'm gonna get to it. So the good news is there's only three essential pieces of equipment to make this stove. One is hearing protection. One is eye protection and a good set of gloves for metal. Let's be fair here, you're playing with fire when you're building a stove. The basic tools I use for this project are a grinder, a blowtorch, a large table vise, a ball peen hammer, a lot of files, a hacksaw, a drill press, a portable drill, a metal jigsaw, lots of clamps, a measuring square, tin snips, screwdrivers, pliers, a rivet gun, and a bending brake. So if you have both the access and experience with these tools, this project's for you. All required parts for this video are listed in the video description. Step one is removing the lid, which just slides off the hinges. Take a pair of pliers and remove the rubber gasket. Using 3 8 inch stove rope, measure how much you need to fit where the rubber was. If you have a sensitivity to fiberglass, please wear gloves. Apply the gasket glue and cut to suit.
This provides a heat resistant seal from smoke. Next, remove the handle. This involves drilling the spot wells just a little to weaken them enough to pry with a screwdriver. Using the pipe cut from the propane fuel cylinder, trace out the line with a pencil. The back aligns with the lid center line and the line at the right is about five and a half inches from the hinge end. The second pipe is one and a half inches closer to the hinge. Drill guide holes for the jigsaw first and then cut out the holes with the jigsaw. As I don't have a welder, I needed to form flanges in the stovepipe collars. I did this by securing the pipe in a wood fixture and then peened the rim with a hammer. I heated the edge with a torch to anneal the metal for further forming. I also had the pipe tilted slightly so the flange had a slight angle. Once the flange was formed, I pounded it down flat. For a good flat sealing surface, I compressed the flange in a vise. The metal sheet inside the lid was removed by prying the welds. Using fiberglass cloth, I cut two pieces to act as a smoke seal around the collars. The collars were then inserted and the metal sheet replaced. I used stainless steel rivets to fasten it all in place. I've also angled these just a little bit so the hopper is just at a little bit of an angle so it won't interfere with the stove pipe. While some stoves have a damper as an accessory, I saw no reason not to integrate it into the body of the stove. Using thin steel, I cut out a disc the size of the inside pipe diameter. I dremeled four slots and bent the strips in between to insert the shaft. The shaft was a barbecue skewer with copper pennies and springs to provide a little friction for damper control. Holding from underneath, I inserted the disc and guided the skewer through two drilled holes in the pipe. To secure the end, I squeezed the tip with a vise. So here's what I've got so far. I've been working on the lid. I installed a collar for the flue and a collar for the hopper. And I've also put a damper in. Now, some people might wonder, well, why is your hopper right beside the flue or the stovepipe? They should be at opposite ends. Well, the reason for that is what's happening inside. So what I have here is an inner wall I put like a divider. So the initial combustion area is right here. It has to go around the corner and then up through the stovepipe. And the reason I did that is because it gives me a longer channel so that I can collect more heat and also gives me a better chance to get rid of some of the smoke as well. There's two dividers that are needed in the box. The bottom one separates the oven from the stove and the top one splits the combustion chamber. I did not make detailed notes of how I bent it, but the concept should be clear, and I think I used roughly 22 gauge steel. Once the two pieces are riveted together, the whole assembly slides in from the top. 
I also fashioned a groove on the upper wall to provide a seal with the stove rope. The finished dimensions of the side door opening are 4 inches high by 3 and 3 eighths inches wide. However, I cut out less to allow for the steel to be folded over. To fold, I attach thick metal strips to each side and clamp them in place, then push the clamps around the edge. A pair of pliers finished the bend. For the cooking top and the door, I needed the thicker steel plate. So I have this big piece that I rescued out of a barbecue. It's nice and thick. And uh, the problem is, how am I going to cut it? Sawing with a hacksaw or jigsaw would just wear out blades. So I drilled the outline and the oil reduced the friction. The space between the holes was cut out by a hacksaw and then the edges ground and filed down. It was a lot of work. The fun thing about taking on a project like this, and I do call it a project, it's, it's not a chore. I want to do it, but the neat thing is it allows you to be creative, to hone new skills, to be innovative, to overcome problems, and, uh, and enjoy it while you're doing it. It's, it's not like putting together IKEA furniture, which to me is very frustrating. It's not the outcome that's important, it's the path to getting there. It's almost therapeutic. <laughs>